This is called the spending matrix. Good way to live our life. Spending matrix. Tricks, tricks, that's, that's like that. Okay, here we go. Um, bottom line on the spending matrix, it starts down here. So if this is your starting point, as you work your way around, number one on a spending matrix is patience and exercising patience, okay? So what does that mean? When you go shopping, when you go to buy something, first thing you wanna think about is patience. Do I really need this right now? Can, can I wait on this? Is this the most important thing I have to use my money on, right? So it's patience. This pen is not very good. Let's try this one. Next step, as you go around the spending matrix, ooh, that one's better. We're starting here. We're exercising patience. We are probing our, in, our motives, all right? We're thinking about why is it that I want to buy that big screen TV? Why is it that I need this new car? Why is it that I need whatever that item is, right? So you're exercising patience. It means you're not just going to the store, you're buying something. You're thinking about why it is. What are your motives? You're probing that. And then third is to pray, to pray. Uh, and you pray for discernment, all right? Pray for discernment. Is this something that I really need? And if you take time to pray when you go and you are looking for something, it's going to, one, slow you down, right? Because you're going to be thinking about what it is, what it is that I need this for. And if I take time to pray for God's direction and discernment, it's going to give you a little time in the process of spending your resources to make sure that it's the right thing to do. And then you come back around. And there's really three answers that you're going to get here. All right, there's three answers. Those answers are yes, do it, no, don't do it, or maybe, all right, or wait, all right? So the process kind of is a cycle. And if the, if the answer is yes, you know that you're there. If the answer is no, you know that it's not the right time perhaps, and it maybe or wait moves you back into the, into the cycle. So that's the spending matrix, okay? Is that pretty clear? You guys will kind of need to know that. We'll be looking at that again. This other one, okay, that was some deep stuff he was giving us there, huh? I, were, I think I would have got that one chart wrong. Okay, here we go. This is called the positioning money. All right, positioning money. And the bottom line on this chart um, is that if you make a circle, all right, where it's like a target. So we got, we got some concentric circles that look like this. That was pretty good. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. All right. On the inside of this little, this little diagram are core truths. Core truths, okay? And it's the positioning money um, chart. Bottom line on this, the core truths. This is, um, this is God's part. I'll just kind of write these out. God's part, our part. All right. It's um, honesty giving. It's all the things that we've been talking about in class. It's council debt. You know, it's um, work eternity. All the stuff that we've been talking about in class, and it's getting a perspective, right? We've talked about that. That's the core truth. That's the, that's the heart of the decision-making process and how we should be positioning money, right? It should come from scripture, right? Next is, Conviction. Conviction. And conviction is things like um, when it comes to insurance. Should I have it? You know, he gave us some really good arguments on insurance, right? Um, student loans. Right? Uh, retirement accounts. 
we're going to have convictions about insurance. We're going to have convictions about how many loans should we take out. We're going to have uh, convictions about retirement accounts based on our core truths, right? On these things that we know from scripture, right? So we're going to base decisions like this on what we know to be true from the word of God. Next step out is opinion. Opinion. And on the opinion side, um, you're going to have opinions about things like mortgages. How much is enough? How much is too much? Um, insurance here, right? Uh, stock market. You're going to get different advisors that tell you different things about the stock market. He was pretty pro stock market, wasn't he? A lot of advisors are. They think it's a really good resource for us. So he's going to give you opinions based on his convictions, based on the core truths that he understands, right? Does that make sense? <clears throat> the next category are questions. Questions. And questions such as, uh, how much is enough? We've talked about that this semester. How much do you need to make? To whom should I give? Right? Or how much do I, how much do I give? All right, those are questions that you can design based on your opinions from your convictions that come from the core truths that you've learned. That's why this is so critical, right? And that outside circle are outside influencers, right? It's the world, it's what you hear in media, it's what you hear from your friends. It's what you hear from the message that, that comes from the outside. Too often in life, we go outside in, right? We let these drive our heart and our actions, our commitment, our passions. Outside influencers are what drives our life, rather than going from core truths. So what you've done all semester long is to build those core truths that are going to affect your convictions, that will affect your opinion, that will help answer the questions. Does that make sense? And what I'm challenging you to do is not be influenced by this, but go from inside out rather than inside in. Make sense? Kind of an important thing, and I, and I hope you guys get it, because this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where you'll take what you've learned this semester, and you'll apply it, not being influenced by the outside, okay? Important stuff. Okay, um, for the project next week, I want to make sure that you've got the idea of what you're building your presentations on. Remember what they are. You remember, guys remember the five things? Here they are. Why? Determine and understand your motives for giving. That is so huge for you guys. We're going to talk a little bit about giving here real quick. Number one in Wes's design and Wilmer's idea is number one, determine and understand your motives for giving, the why. Number two, what method? What method are you going to use to give? What, what areas has God blessed you in that you can use to give back, right? Um, a good rule of thumb, we haven't really talked about this, but you should focus on six to ten organizations at the most, so preferably less, that you can focus your intentions on. When you're out of here, you're looking for future donations, look at six to ten at the most, and commitment over time. Don't just fly in and drop a little money and fly out. Look for organizations that you can commit to over time time where you can see a difference in those organizations. That is so cool. Your generation does a better job of that than mine. You know, we've tended to kind of sprinkle a little money here and there. But you guys get passionate about something and you give towards it. That is so cool. And that's the best way to give. So think about your methodology.
Biola University offers a variety of biblically-centered degree programs, ranging from business to ministry to the arts and sciences. Visit biola.edu to find out how Biola could make a difference in your life.